Hi, everybody. This is Coach Allison. And this week, welcome back to Defy Aging, by the way, week 30. And if you recall, we have kind of started this trend of every 10 weeks doing mobility week. So uh, it is back to a mobility week this week. Uh, we are going to do an at your own pace routine in your own space. Um, for this, there's five exercises. We're going to run this for 24 minutes. So what you'll do is do your own, uh, do all these movements at your own pace. Now, typically when we do these types of, <coughs> excuse me, routines, you're kind of going for a speed and you're trying to get as many rounds in as you can. For this, it's kind of, you're not trying to get a ton of rounds in. We want all of these movements to be slow and controlled. So we're really not trying to beat the clock and being like, yeah, I want to get a lot of rounds in. If you get, you know, two, three, four, it does, don't, tr don't try to be getting as many rounds as you can. It's really just however many you get is however many you get, and that's okay. So again, five exercises, five movements. Each one will be have a different amount of reps, and that will be designated on the board. So you can always refer to the board to remind yourself how many reps they are. And let's go through what those five movements are. Okay, everybody, the first one is quadruped shoulder mobility. Okay. You're going to be on hands and knees for this. Okay. There. Um, definitely want a mat under your knees, I would guess. So we want to keep a neutral spine. So that's the first key with this. So we're trying to avoid an overly arched low back or an overly rounded back to start. And you want to keep your neck neutral. So while I might be looking up to be looking at you, but while you're doing this, you want to keep a neutral neck so that you're just looking straight down at the floor under your face. So don't be drooping your head. And also, ugh, don't be looking up like this. Okay, so nice neutral spine and neck. Just uh, five on each side for this. So do all five on one side before you switch so we're not alternating. Bring your arms straight forward. If possible, try to get that arm parallel parallel to the floor. See how my arm is parallel to the floor? And it's okay if, if you can't. That's why we're doing this mobility to improve shoulder mobility, right? Um, so already it is hard to do that. It's almost tiring holding it parallel. So some of us might kind of stop here. If there's any pain going higher, don't force it. That's very important. All right. Oh, this hair. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So keeping that neck neutral, we're going to watch my hand as I do this. I'm starting with palm starting with palm down and I'm slowly, now we don't want to whip through this, slow, slowly bringing my arm back, keeping it parallel to the floor if possible. When you get to about arm straight out from the side, jeez, can't get my whole body in the front. Watch my palm now. I'm going to flip palm up. You don't have to stop like I did. That was just to show you. Keep it moving. Then bring it. Now I'm actually touching my low back. I'm gliding the back of my hand up my spine as far as it's able to go. And just as far as it can go, don't force it. Then I'm done with the first part of the movement. I'm going to reverse what I just did. Again, halfway up, watch my palm. Now I'm rotating it back down, continuing the movement till I'm right back where I started. And we're going to just do it again. Watch my palm, turn it up. Bringing that hand, the back of the hand up my spine to about mid back or as high as I'm able to. Reversing it. Palms now rotating, so I'm palm down. All the while, my arm is staying about parallel to the floor. Okay, and that's about the speed you want to go to. <laughs> Hopefully, you shouldn't have to move around like I did because I was trying to keep my body in the frame. So you'll do five on one side, five uh, on the other side. Going at that speed. It should take, I don't know, I mean, 30 plus seconds to do five reps on one side. So if you're done in like 10 seconds or 20 seconds, that might, you might be going too fast. So we're not doing this. Okay. The point of mobility work is to go slow, focused, and controlled. Um, anyone staying off the floor, uh, you can easily do that with an incline bench. Pardon me for not being super prepared. I apologize. We're not having this right here. Same thing. As you can see, everything is the same. Being uh, being uh, on the uh, being on the feet and hands on a box. So exactly the same thing. 
uh, if you're staying off the floor. Quad rock back is the next one. Okay, you're still on the floor for this, on your, kind of on your hands and knees. We're gonna go into what I call the tripod position because we have a tripod position in our current warm up. So that's this. Okay, one leg is straight out to the side. I think it's best if I show you from the side, yeah. Straight out to the side. If your foot comfortably goes flat, go for it. If it needs to go onto the side, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> hands are directly under your shoulders, okay? And we're gonna sink the hips. Oh, I have to keep moving to get myself in the frame here. Sink the hips or the butt back to the heel, getting as flat as you can. You're gonna feel quite the stretch and the pull in this upper, uh, in this inner thigh here. And then come back up to the quadruped position or the tripod position. So quad rock back, quadruped rock back and up, go relatively slow, five each side, okay. And maybe, I don't know, if, just make sure you're seeing the hips go back. I'll show you from the other side too. Sinking back to that um, heel. And then coming back to just the normal starting position. Okay, those don't take too terribly long, but again, you wanna go slow. So I'm telling you the speed is the key for this mobility stuff. So we're not just doing this, right? Now, the, the, uh, the option for those of us staying off the floor is a little different. You'll need an incline bench, or sorry, in, uh, something, a bench, sorry. But where you're sitting and how you're sitting on it makes all the difference. You need to be, it's kind of awkward. You need to be scooted to the side. So this side of your butt can is off of the bench. So literally I'm sitting half of my butt on here because you need this side to be off. See that? Now I'm, this is me sitting all the way on it. I can't get my... It's getting, it's impeding my ability to get this leg out. Now I'm sitting just this one side of my butt on here. So that's very important. So, but then you do the same thing as the same, relatively the same form as the other one on the floor. This leg is all the way out straight. Very important that it's straight to get the stretch here. And then we're gonna lean forward as far as you're able and come back. So you'll do five of these. The more forward you lean, the more you're gonna get that stretch in here. Okay, so that is the option for any of us who are staying off of the floor. Windmills. Now these, I could make this a 15 minute tutorial, so I'm gonna do my best to keep it short. Your coaches will spend more time on it with you in person during your sessions, because they are relatively complex. And they don't feel natural. So if you don't get it right away, don't worry. You need to have a relatively wide stance. We're gonna do five on each side. Whatever side you're starting on, so I'm gonna start on my right. I'm gonna turn that foot out to the right. And then I'm gonna take my other foot and just angle it just a, just a little bit to the right, not a full turn like that. Just a little bit, see? Okay, I'm gonna put my right hand along my right thigh here, inside of my thigh. You can do palm in. It kind of puts your shoulder in a better retracted position if you do palm forward. So watch my shoulder as I turn my palm forward, kind of retracted my shoulder, and that's a little bit better. I'm going to take my left arm and put it straight up, palm neutral, so palm facing inward. Okay? Now, a windmill involves a hip hinge. So see my little hip shift here? This is very important. It's small but it's very important. This hip shift is kind of where it all happens. I'm just gonna keep doing it so you get, the, you get the gist. Okay, so if you can't make your hips do this, practice it. Notice how my torso is not moving. So I'm not, this isn't just leaning, I'm shifting my hips. Okay, so we do that hip shift that I just did. So start them in the middle and then pop them out to this side, to the left. Slight bend in the right knee, that knee that you're, the side that you're going down, just a little bend though, we're not doing a lunge. I'm gonna look up towards the hand that's in the ceiling, uh, to the ceiling, to the sky. And I'm just gently grazing this right hand, physically touching down this right leg. Remember that hip shift that I did? I'm continuing that hinge as I go down. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily, I'm not leaning forward. I'm hinging to the side. So you get as low as you want. I'm getting pretty low. You don't have to get this low. 
I'm coming, but you want to go slow. So I'll just keep doing a couple. Now this arm might want to go back like this. This is the mobility component. It's hip mobility and shoulder mobility. If you're wondering why on earth we're doing this, hip mobility and shoulder mobility. So I have a nice straight line from middle finger to middle finger, from fingertips to fingertips. Now I don't have a straight line. We want that nice straight line. And we want to keep that straight line at the top and at the bottom. Do this in front of a mirror. Trust me, even I, the form is wonky when I do it myself if I'm not in front of a mirror. So everyone needs to do this in front of a mirror. So wide stance, angle the feet towards the direction you're gonna be tilting to my right. Soft bend in that knee as well of the right leg. Top arm up, bottom arm down. Do that hip pop, that hip shift, and graze that bottom arm down the front of that leg. Keep looking up towards the top hand. Whew. Yes, so that was, I, that was me trying to keep it short. <laughs> so your coaches will help you. We're gonna do five to one direction, then switch the stance and everything, five to the other direction. It's tricky. Uh, make the movement small while you're learning, while you're, I'll do the other side, so I even myself out here. Start with the movement small while you're learning. See how this, I'm doing it smaller now. This would be a great starting point. See if you can get your fingertips maybe just past your knee while you're learning the move. Again, hip shift, then go down. Again, hip shift, then go down. As you get more comfortable with it, as you feel like you're kind of getting it, then work on going lower. All right, good luck. That's our windmill. Next movement is a hip bridge with clamshells. This one's different. Uh, let's just hop into it, eh? Okay. So, lying on the floor. <laughs> so graceful. So a standard hip bridge would be this, lifting the hips up and down, right? So I want you to start with your feet right next to each other. Relatively, they can have a little space, but... All right, so at the top of your bridge, you're gonna do three clamshells, which is opening and closing um, the knees. And we're gonna go through five of these. No, I'm sorry, 10 of these. So it's gonna take a little hot minute to do it. So we lift, hold the top, go one, two, three, and down. Again, lift, one, two, three, and down. Get the gist of that, right? Um, as you're doing those clamshells, you might feel your feet very subtly rolling kind of to the outside of the shoe, just a little. It won't roll all the way, but you might just feel a little shift in the feet. That's good. That means you're getting those knees really wide. You'll feel the focus of the movement switch from the center of the glute kind of towards the outside of the glute towards the hip. That's good as well. We want to focus kind of on shifting that focus to the hip there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, 10 of those. Uh, for anyone staying off the floor, it's going to be a unique kind of uh, alternative. I have to stop this for a moment and I'll show you what that's going to be. Okay, the alternative is going to be a wall sit uh, with a, a ball squeeze. So we want the ball to be light. So, so a lot, most of the clubs have these old silver sneakers balls. Aww. Um, and if not, it should, hopefully you have like a, something light it could even be like one of the four pound medicine balls. Even They could even be the hard ones because it doesn't have to squish. I'm telling this mostly to the coaches. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to squish because you can squeeze something hard and you can, uh, you can still apply pressure to it. So it just has to be kind of light though. We don't want this to be done with like a 20 pound ball. So you and your coaches can get creative with that. <laughs> but I think most of the clubs still have some of these. Um, so we're going to waltz it. Come down as low as you're comfortable going. Um, the lower, the harder it gets, but make sure you start your feet farther enough out. Because if I was to come down like this, now my feet are way too far back because you want at, um, heels, ankles to end directly straight down under knees. Okay, we don't want the feet back here, the knees out there. Very important. I did legs yesterday, so they're really tired. Okay, so, but then we place this between the knees, a little up from the actual knee joint, so a little higher up, maybe between the thighs. And we're gonna squeeze 30 times. I picked 30 because 
the folks on the floor doing the clamshells, they end up doing 30 clamshells because it's 10 reps of three pulses. So I'm like, that seems fair, right? So, I don't know. So you're gonna squeeze one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Be honest about it. Don't squeeze at a nice, consistent, steady pace, not one, two, three, four, five. Um, just because you don't get much out of that momentum me squeezing. So one, two, three. Let's go at a nice, steady pace. But that's your alternative to the hip bridge with the clamshells. This last mobility move is the open book stretch. I took a couple of these from our uh, team programming warm up. So if you do team sessions as well, you're going to recognize some of these, but they're really good. Um, hope you can see what's happening on both directions here. So you start with knees bent, and I'm going to dip my knees to one side, keeping them together. Go as far as you're able. Like my knees aren't, they're like this, they're hovering this far off the floor. That's okay. I'm opening up my arms so they're straight out from my shoulder sockets. They're not down or not up. Okay. Now, the direction your knees are pointing, I'm going to close the book. The book's open right now. I'm the book. So I'm going to close. I should go the other way because I'm going to be turning away from you. Okay. Switching. Okay. My, oh, I can get farther on this side. Knees are together. Opening the book. Okay. So I'm going to close the book. When you do this, I'm turning completely onto my side now, right? Like uh, my back, you can tell my back's off the floor. I'm completely on my side. That's close the book. Now I'm going to open the book. And oh, this thing. Now my upper back is completely back on the floor. But notice I didn't move my knees, so I didn't lift my knees up more. So I'll do a couple. This is one rep. And open. Go slow with this. Two, my, I'm turning complete. So you're basically turning like, I don't know, supposed to be a quarter turn. Okay, maybe I should have just shown you both sides. So you can, you really need to see how both sides look. Okay, I'm going back to the first side so I didn't have to switch because I want you to see both sides. So see how again, my whole entire back, I'm completely on my side now. My whole back is off the floor. Now I'm slowly gonna open. My hips are staying and my legs are staying where they were but now my whole upper back is on the floor and close. So your head rolls on the side too, okay? Okay, so I think you get the gist. Now, some of you might be trying it and saying like, I, my, I can't, <sighs> um, like that's not working. Like I can't make my body, when I turn or when I open up, I can't get my full back on the floor. That's okay, that's why we do this mobility stuff. So um that's we're gonna do 10 on each side very slow controlled if you take to five more than once throughout the week hopefully the second and or third time you do it you might notice it's getting a little more flexible and you might get a little farther with that one it is kind of a tight stretch so uh, only go as far as your body allows you to go don't force going any farther but see how much of your upper back you can keep on the floor when you're in that open position Try to keep the legs completely on the side. So try not to let the legs waver too much and see how it goes. Um, I'll show you the alternative for anyone um, staying off the floor. One second. Anyone staying off the floor for our exercises, it'll be a cross, uh, a seated hip stretch with a rotation, excuse me. So this is our seated, our seated standard seated hip stretch. One leg is up and you lean forward. So we're not gonna do the lean. So the one leg is up. If getting that leg up there is a little tricksy, you can put, the floor leg a little farther forward and that gives you a lower base to get that leg up and you can use the hands to scoot it up there it doesn't matter just get that leg up there and then you're going to do some rotating kind of the same way as the open book right so with this leg up here we're going to rotate to both directions something was flying around so i'm going to put the hands on the back of my bench here and use my leg to kind of pull myself around breathe and then kind of go the other way same thing, hand on the back of the bench. So I'm using that back of the bench as leverage to pull myself around. Let the head turn too, because when your head goes one way, your whole body wants to follow. So it helps you get a better range of motion. So since you're going both directions, you'll do five full rotations. So one, two, with one side, and then five with the other side. And that'll be a great alternative to help get that spinal rotation and kind of get that hip mobility uh, stretch 
for an alternative to the one on the floor. Okay, everybody, those are our five movements. They're very involved. For being only five movements, I think it's a lot of info to take in, right? You might only get, in the 24 minutes, you might only get through two rounds. It doesn't matter because they're very involved and some of them are quite complex. So those are our five movements. Our team builder, when everybody is done after the 24 minutes, um, it's more of a finisher because you're not actually working as a team. Um, we're going to do five minutes on some cardio. So pick a cardio piece of cardio equipment, treadmill, elliptical, rower, um, the air dimes, the spin bikes. Yes. Pick a piece of a cord cardio equipment. We're going to do five minutes on that. I want you to work to a perceived exertion level, a PE level of like a five to seven. You know, a one is I'm sitting on the couch watching TV and a 10 is, oh my gosh, please call me an ambulance. So we want you at a five to seven on that scale. So it's perceived exertion. It's how you feel you're exerting yourself. Five minutes of that, and that is our finisher. And that is our mobility week with a little bit of a cardio finisher. And I hope you enjoy it. See you back next time.